their study recently that 72% of consumers would actually switch their primary financial institution if it didn't connect to the fintech app that they liked and preferred. You're now listening to Fintech Confidential, bringing you the people, tech, and companies that change how you pay and get paid. Be sure to subscribe to Fintech Confidential on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast player by going to podcast.fintechconfidential.com and sign up for Fintech Confidential information at access.fintechconfidential.com. Ryan, welcome to the show. I am so happy to be sitting down with you, the Executive Vice President of Marketing, just as everyone is preparing for the 2022 Money Experience Summit in Snowbird there in Utah. And that's going on from September 20th to the 22nd. But before I dive into what that is all about, who it's for, and why anybody should attend, I'm going to do like this 100,000 foot view of what MX is just to set the stage. Now, from my perspective, I look at MX today as being a powerhouse in fintech that is leading the way for open finance that has raised over $450 million in funding, has hundreds, if not thousands of employees, and is providing services across the entire fintech ecosphere for financial wellness, digital banking, payments, lending, crypto, you name it, it feels like MX has figured out a way to make it a little bit better. Now, I'm not going to dive into MX straight away, but your journey has been quite an adventure. Prior to joining MX, you were at Qualtrics, just up the 15, and you contributed as a marketing leader that helped them scale for an eventual sale to SAP for about $8 billion, and then the IPO of an astonishing $27 billion. What are a few things that you've learned from that experience that you use today to build the iconic brand and accelerate the growth of MX? Awesome, Ted. It's super nice to be here. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. I'm very grateful and fortunate to be at MX and uh, with this incredible team. Yeah, as a at Qualtrics, I started as the first product marketer there. And so I had an opportunity back in 2013 to help with the messaging and positioning and kind of the category creation of what became experience management. And that really helped me understand the power of experiences. And it's the Money Experience Summit. Experiences throughout that journey has been part of my career where experiences matter, whether it's your digital experiences or the in-person experiences that you have. Certainly excited to pull that and bring it to life here in September. What are the types of things that that you found was a really quick migration over when you started MX from that experience, how are you leveraging those things to really build up the brand for MX and really provide that experience? How are you bridging the gap and bringing those learnings from that customer experience side over to the financial FinTech side of the house? Yeah. As you think about your financial journey as a consumer, you have lots of financial apps. You probably have several bank accounts, several loans in different places. And that can, that experience, there's a lot of friction in that. And so MX, we are sitting at the center of that, of connecting the financial ecosystem through secure APIs and infrastructure that allows you as a consumer to be able to have a connected financial experience. That's a powerful thing when the number one cause of stress in America is, is finances, a leading cause of divorce is finances. MX is the most mission-driven company I've ever been a part of. Really empowering the world to be financially strong is what we're all about. And we are a B2B company, so we serve banks and credit unions and fintechs. But uh, we think about things from a B2C standpoint where we really are trying to empower that consumer. It's so funny you mentioned about the, the divorce rate around finances. And really, if you look at MX, it, it started with humble beginnings, with a marriage of two ideas from two different guys together to deliver what MX is doing today. Tell me about what the catalyst was for Ryan and Brandon to even start MX back in 2010. Awesome story. Two founders uh, back in the day, one in Utah, one in Illinois, and they were working on the same problem uh, to really democratize financial data and make it usable uh, through personal financial management tools. And uh, as we were working on those things, realized that they were both working on something similar. They met up and uh, 
crazy story, Brandon DeWitt, who's my favorite person I've ever met on this earth, uh, <laughs> flew out to, to Utah and met with Ryan Caldwell and they started brainstorming whiteboarding and crazy story, but they had a flight that evening. They were, you know, eight hours, 10 hours in. And Brandon looked it over at his co-founder and said, you know, I think I'm just going to stay here. And so that his friend and buddy who started the company with him was like, well, what do you mean? Like you'll fly out back tomorrow or like, do you want me to move the flights? What do you want to do? And he's like, no, I think I'm just going to stay here and build oh, with wow. Ryan Caldwell. And so he didn't actually go back. He, we had somebody uh, at the time, they had somebody go out and get his things at his apartment and bring them back to Utah. And he uh, stayed and built uh, with Ryan and, and stayed in Ryan's basement. And from there, it was this incredible journey of building an incredible company. But uh, and yeah, and just amazing, amazing uh, founders. So with that amazing founder story, how would you describe where MX is at today in the marketplace? As you think about the evolution of personal financial management, to do that well, you have to have really good quality data. And so if you kind of go upstream from doing that really well, it's the quality of data and, and ultimately getting access to that data. And so if you think about the journey of MX, uh, we kind of do three things. We uh, There's kind of three pillars, if you will, connectivity, data, and experiences. And so as you go upstream from data up into connectivity, we're helping connect that financial ecosystem through secure APIs and tokenized connections. And as we're able to do that, we're able to go drive better experiences for our, our customers, the banks, credit unions, or fintechs with their data, which then enables them to go deliver the experiences they want to go do. And so it's been an evolution from sort of PFM back in the, you know, several years ago up into sort of connecting the ecosystem. Personal financial management software has taken such a journey um, from from back in the day to where it is today. Now I'm going to ask you to put on put on your future lenses on your you know on you don't have glasses, but if you did have glasses, I'd ask you to to put those glasses on. But where do you see the MX mission and vision take us to in the future? So our mission is to empower the world to be financially strong. And our vision is very, very clear at MX that we want to go and make data accessible and actionable for all. <laughs> As we think about these different horizons that we're going to go and, and build, we feel like embedded banking is really uh, on that horizon that we're building into with a path of API banking and everything running through APIs. And so as we think about this journey of uh, a connected ecosystem and getting the infrastructure in place to make sure that this uh, financial world flows like we all want it to do, all the way down to the journey of several years out where everything's embedded and everything is uh, that experience that you really expect, similar to what you have with Netflix or Amazon or Spotify and all those things embedded. You mentioned a bunch of really big names and you've talked about a number of different ways that you're bringing that to life around not only the personal financial management side of the house, but just the overarching data management layer, whether it be through APIs or through the user experience or just connecting things together so that people don't have to work through that. Now, the company's list of customers and partners, I started doing the research a little bit deeper. I knew a little bit about MX, but I started to really dive in. The list is impressive and extremely broad. Like lots of household names like H&R Block, MetLife. I think I found USAA somewhere in there. I, I could be making that one up on my own. But also some not so well-known companies like Everywhere, Fiserv, and, and even Move. Tell me about what the perfect customer looks like for MX. MX was founded in 2010 and started with banks and credit unions and building those relationships. Uh, think of the sort of the mid-sized bank or the the credit union that really needed a tech player to help them compete with some of the big the big players. And that's kind of the sweet spot of where MX started. Over the last four or five years, MX has really moved into the fintech space as well to go connect banks and credit unions with fintechs. We did our study recently that 72% of consumers would actually switch their primary financial institution. Oh, wow. If it didn't connect to the fintech app that they liked and preferred. So think about this. If, it, if you're using a, a Betterment or, and it's your favorite app, yeah. if U.S. Bank didn't connect to, to Betterment, they'd be switching that to a different provider or whatever bank that you're using 
uh, locally. And so it's super, super critical for consumers to be able to have that connected experience. Um, and so we've seen that over the last several years where we've uh, started to um, build relationships and uh, serve uh, hundreds of fintechs, which has been great. So, I mean, we, we've, you touched on banks, you touched on generically some fintech stuff in there. And I, I'm blown away by, by the percentage of people who are willing to switch their financial institution if their current one doesn't offer the functionality that they're looking for. Can you give us some ideas to the types of financial apps that you've worked in or MX is connected with? I should say not worked in, but connected with, um, that, that would be something that we may not, may not think of off the top of our head. So if you heard of a company called Form Free, uh, they're a great partner um, and great friends of MX. And uh, one of the challenges actually in 2020, their exp- users were experiencing really long connection times um, and really dealing with some multi-factor authentication issues. And it resulted in kind of a higher number of users canceling the connection. And it made it really, really difficult for them to complete the loan origination process, Form Free uh, processes, uh, a ton, a ton of loans in the mortgage space. And so by using our, our modern aggregation connections, they were able to take the average time to aggregate their accounts from two minutes and 30 seconds down to 22 seconds, which basically Whoa. has an 89, 89% decrease in aggregation time. And what it did for form free is it increased their revenue by 15%. Um, and so. So it's not about just having the next sexy, it's not about having the sexy interface all the time. It, it really does come down to actually generating additional revenues through all these, these synergies or, or, uh, yeah, I would say synergies. Absolutely. It's been, I love being at a company that is so mission driven, but it also, a uh, really a need to have product. So it's, uh, there's only a handful of companies that can do what we do. And so being in a space that, uh, is, impacting businesses bottom line and uh in many ways not being able to operate without a service like we have has has been rewarding to be a part of and also there's a lot of pressure to make sure that we deliver and and make sure these our customers are uh, happy and having a good experience one of the really interesting things that i noticed when i was reading through all of the new news is that you launched a partner program that has just exploded what do you attribute to it being so successful so quickly? Uh, good question, Ted. I, uh, we're excited about our partner program. We're excited about all of our partners and the ability for us to go and help them uh, with the use cases that they're building. And so uh, we have a great partnership team. They've been building relationships for years and it takes uh, it takes time to build partnerships and build relationships the right way. And so we're excited to do that at scale in a bigger way. Um, if interested, please reach out to our team um, there's, uh, new SDKs and APIs that are able to be connected into if, as you're building, if you're working with builders or just re- simply relationships that we can open up doors for you as you're building your business. We'd love to be a part of that discussion and, um, certainly would love to c- put you in touch with our team. So you've mentioned mission, you've mentioned in a in kind of a roundabout way, the overall culture of the company and, and just how everything um, is, is the way I guess I would describe it is like the builder mentality, figuring out how to build bigger, better products that serve the market. Um, being a product geek myself, I understand that quite well. So I, I'm curious from your perspective, like, what do you think it is or or what have you heard from from those within the organization? Because cultures, when you get this big so fast, and I mean, obviously, we're looking at 12 years now, but but still, that's pretty fast overarching. When you get this big, how do you maintain the culture? And, and like, how do you see that that really working to to keep that drive going? Absolutely. It starts with our with our hiring bar and hiring the right people we hire for. Uh, we don't hire jerks and we hire people that truly care <laughs> about people. And so, uh, one, the talent bar is crazy, crazy high. And, and, uh, it's one of the premier employers in Utah. And we've been able to go expand our, uh, with remote hires, uh, really all over, uh, North America, which has been an ad- awesome addition to be able to bring in, um, some amazing people. Um, but we have our mission and our values all over the walls at, at MX and we live it. Um, we, every single question that you get when you go, to interview at MX is you're probably going to get asked six or seven times uh, throughout the panel process. 
you know, what you think about our mission and our values and uh, which ones are your favorite? Why do they resonate? Um, and so we're hiring really, really good people that care deeply about other people. And that's, it starts there. A uh, great executive leadership team, a uh, great North Star and vision of where we're going, a roadmap of where we're going and making sure that we uh, are dedicated to that. I think companies do really well uh, when they're able to say no to things as well. And uh, there's a million things that you could be doing yeah. and we're not going to be everything to everybody, but how do we get focused to serve our sweet spot? Um, and I think we've done a much uh, better job with that um, than uh, many companies have and they sometimes struggle with. All right, man. I've stalled as long as I possibly can. I, I Please share with, with the audience what the Money Experience Summit 2022 is all about. I know we've touched on it, but let, let, let's just dive headstrong right into it. Yeah. So Money Experience Summit, or we call it MXS for short, is <laughs> uh, ultimately an industry event. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a big believer in user conferences, and so I'll call it what it is. It's an industry event open and available for everybody. Uh, there's something for everybody in the industry. It's where the very best of the best are gathering in the mountains of Utah to talk about the most important challenges ahead of them. We do it in the fall and September. Uh, the mountain and the leaves are changing from uh, green to yellow and red. Um, the vibe, uh, fresh air, it's away from sort of New York and, and other places where it can feel a little bit stuffy. And the people, I think, is what make the difference. Uh, the It's a really senior group that comes out, uh, founders, CEOs, um, VPs in banking, fintech, builders. We have sort of three tracks um, uh, for, for builders and doers and dreamers that are kind of working on different things. So we're really excited to bring it, bring it to life uh, this year. Uh, this last year, we had um, some amazing feedback and are uh, going even bigger and better this year. Yeah, when I looked at the agenda, my first reaction immediately was like, wow, this is not your average fintech event. There are high hackathons, which is pretty common now. It didn't used to be, but it is now. Concerts, sunrise hikes, a film screening, and last but not least, a ton of educational sessions that are all over the place. You mentioned the three tracks, um, and that is really cool to see. It, get, it got me thinking, what was the thought behind the agenda, the speakers, and the activities. Absolutely. Um, if you recall last year, for anybody that got to come last year, we had Peyton Manning come out. We had Mario Andretti come out. We had Apollo Ono and Allison Felix and um, some incredible speakers that uh, really, I think, got a lot of excitement. And, and I think we tied in a lot of relevance to the industry. This year, we leaned in a little bit harder on industry and some of the icons and luminaries within the industry um, to make sure that everybody left with a really solid game plan and action plan, inspired to go take on uh, the world ahead of them. So we do have Will I Am coming out to do a keynote. Uh, he's going to bring uh, the Black Eyed Peas and do some awesome stuff uh, in the evening time uh, for an evening performance. Uh, we got a really cool opening performance from Philip Bowen. If you haven't checked him out on Instagram or TikTok, you like, just blowing that up where he does fiddle over top of really popular songs and it just kind of blows your mind. So um, entertainment is going to be awesome and amazing in the mountains and fresh air of Utah. But uh, as I think about the agenda, one, we want to bring people together to solve problems. We want to bring people together to help them accelerate their roadmap, accelerate uh, the opportunities in front of them. And so if you can take two days, two and a half days, leave renewed, ready to go to conquer the world, but also uh, have a sounding board of your peers that can just answer questions that maybe things that they've already been through. And if you can leave two and a half days later with uh, a playbook on a roadmap, and I think we've done a really good job. And so that's our game plan, Coffee mountainside coffee chats, fireside chats. We actually have something called Riff on a Lift that we're actually gonna put uh, individuals a little bit of a sign up and they'll be able to get on a ski lift ride to the top of the ski lift, talk and shop on what's going on uh, in, in their world at their companies. And then they'll get on the Alpine slide and kind of take the Alpine slide down and kind of make it fun. That arrives right at the, at the base of the mountain where uh, the opening reception is going to be um, with food and music. And uh, we're doing sort of an Oktoberfest style um, uh, for uh, Snowbird, which is kind of famous for that. So it'll be 
it's a huge celebration and party, but there's so much learning and so much uh, uh, wisdom being shared that um, it's something I just really hope people don't miss. You're speaking to my German heritage by calling it Oktoberfest. So even more excited than before. Your attendee list, I, I dove into it, looked at it. There's, it's a who's who's names of companies, but I don't feel like that tells the whole story. It doesn't really, to me, it doesn't really tell the st whole story to who's attending and, and why they're attending. Could you expand on, on who and why they're attending? Yeah, absolutely. So you have everybody from founders and CEOs of fintech companies that are coming to meet in uh, founder forums and discussions, kind of talking peer to peer in uh, what's working for them, what's not, market trends, market dynamics, what's slowing, what's what's accelerating, um, what are they missing, where are their blind spots. So there's all those discussions happening on the mountain. You then have uh, those that are sort of VPs or chief digital experience officers who are thinking about the entire customer journey within that financial ecosystem. Where are the friction points in that journey? And what can they do to co-create a uh, more seamless experience? You also have uh, chief, uh, uh, you also have chief data officers that are here uh, talking about data and the value of data and the, the ability to go make data actionable. Um, we have chief CMOs uh, that are talking marketing strategy and taking insights uh, to uh, go deliver better campaigns and more relevant offers uh, to their their uh, members and users. Um, and uh, ultimately you have a lot of uh, builders, uh, whether it's uh, developers and or uh, chief product officers uh, or uh, product managers, engineers that are building product, connecting code and building new experiences through APIs and uh, our experience tools. And so it's a, it's an ecosystem. It's uh, everybody leaves with new connections, but also, um, some new insights that uh, hopefully, whether it's uh, a founder talking to a founder or developer talking to a founder, leaving with uh, some awesome, awesome new tools. No, that's, that is fantastic. You know, in my mind, as you're talking about this, all I can do is I can see two guys coming together, whiteboarding a little bit or writing it down on notepads and and eventually doing something similar to what happened with MX where where two guys come together with, with similar ideas and, and make something really big of it. I can totally see that happening at one of these summits. Now, our time is just about up, Ryan. But before we go, is there anything that, that maybe I haven't asked about that you just, you just got to talk about? Good question. Yeah, I think as we think about uh, being a part of MX, uh, MX truly, uh, what I loved about coming to MX is it was a company that is truly looking out on behalf of, of the ecosystem and truly wants to do good. Um, our our co-founder, Brandon DeWitt, um, he passed away a year ago from a five-year five battle of cancer. And I think he left a lasting mark that at the end of the day, revenue, doing things for the, you know, taking shortcuts is not, is not worth it. Uh, it's what are you going to go do to, to leave a legacy? And how do we go leave a legacy in this industry of building for 10, 20, 30, 50 years out that the infrastructure in place that we're doing now is going to be robust enough, enterprise grade enough, secure enough to go have thousands and millions of, of developers build on top of our platform and doing it right, uh, treating our customers the right way, making sure that they um, are uh, having an experience that we would expect uh, them to have is really kind of where we're really focused and um, proud to be a part of this company, I guess is what I'd say. So, If they want to learn more about you, the summit and MX, what is the best way to connect with someone? Absolutely. Uh, MX.com is our, our website. If you want to go to the summit, uh, MX.com slash summit, we'll have everything you need for you there to get registered and feel free to connect on LinkedIn, whatever we can do to, uh, help uh, make sure you have what you need. Thanks, Ryan. I'm going to go ahead and put all of that in the show notes and the description. So if, if you're reading or listening or watching this, you'll be able to click on the link and take you straight to both mx.com as well as mx.com forward slash summit to learn more. Ryan, this has been a lot of fun and I am super excited to attend. I can't wait to interview some of the speakers and be part of the MX magic at Snowbird. 
Thank you, Chad. It's been a lot of fun. I really get appreciate getting to know you as well. Thanks for sitting down and sharing with us your story as well as MX. Thanks, Ted.